Well, that was short-lived. A quick jaunt to a tavern, a visit with the mayor, and another task to complete. Except this time, we'll get a tavern. It's for doing what we were already going to do anyways. All we have to do is take care of this big-ass moose, and we get our own tavern. Now, we just have to survive a big pack of wolves. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, on today's short quest, Long Rest. Time to we'll react and say friend. something. Yeah, I would allow that you have that since you're not surprised, but the moose certainly is. So I'll shout run as loud as Dreamer can, and that's that's all I'll do, and then I'll roll initiative. Oh, oh Jesus. Wow. <laughs> oh gosh. They all rolled goddamn rocks. What the fuck? Yeah. The lowest of those God, what was the lowest of those? Like like six thirty eight. 14. No, the giant goat rolled 17. Yeah. Or the most. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 16? 14. 14 was your lowest roll. Oh, God. Uh, I'm sorry for what happens next. Yeah. That, oh, man. Bye, goat. Bye, dreamer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go. It's go time. You say ghost time, but it's wolf time. As a pack of them comes hurtling out of the darkness. Wasted two berries on it, it's dead. All of them racing for the uh, the moose to surround it. Ah, shit. Ignoring the warforged beside it for now. Let's see, can he get there? Yes, he can. This music is very tense for not being mm -hmm. particularly uh, aggressive. All right. And there's going to be a round of attacks here with pack tactics. So all together, one, yeah. two, three, four, five on the our buddy here. God damn, this poor moose. If it survives this, it'll be nuts. It's the animal kingdom, baby. Wow. Oh, those are bad oh, balls. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay, that one probably hits. That one hit for the crit. Damn it. Yep. Damn. Okay, so. So 12, of, 12, 18. 20, oh, I might rolled one too many. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, that last one doesn't. Uh... Okay. One, two. So three of the five. Well, I, you one don't know. Critical. Moose oh, that's true. Low AC. That's true. Yeah. You know, it's a big boy. AC 11. Oh, oh he's shit, done. they all got him. That's yeah, low, AC, low AC, big hit points. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Probably a lot of hit points. As the first three wolves that you had spotted come racing out of the darkness uh, the moose is still lifting its head from you know being low on the ground to pick up the berry when one of them latches itself to the uh, its chest area it isn't quite able to reach the throat the others leap onto the moose a couple of them on the hindquarters all of them digging in their teeth uh, so let's see how much damage we get going here Six, six, six. That one was. Surely a moose is uh, tougher than a... Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. God, four sixes and a seven. Damn. I mean, this doesn't kill Felgrin. No, so... no, yeah, he's, he's good. <laughs> that's okay. the outside. I was looking at my health, I was like, this thing's gotta have decent health. But we'll like... see, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So first off, four sixes, so minus 24. Uh, and minus seven. 31. 31, this moose is still barely alive. There is blood gouts of it just flying across the snow. You can see it steaming in the uh, the faint light as it strikes the snow. And now to see if it uh, falls prone at all. This has to be a DC 11. 
It has to make four of the, or uh, five of those. I was gonna say. It's like super disadvantage. That's it. Yep. That was a one. Yep. With a one. Yeah. With a natty one on the third friggin' save. The Damn. moose, with a startled cry, uh, sort of half strangled, is pulled down into these wolves. And uh, tipped over on its side, legs thrashing, is trying to kick at the wolf pack that had descended upon it. Rian. Oh no, actually, it is our, uh, it's our moose's turn. Yep. It is going to laboriously climb to its feet. Uh. And, uh, it is going to stomp onto the uh, biggest of the wolves in front of it. God damn. With nice. a 20. Oh, gotta hide some of that there. For eight points of damage as it stomps down onto the uh, the leader of the wolves in front of it. And what else have we got here? Uh, it's going to swing out with its antlers next. Still attacking nice. the same wolf. It's an 18 for 13 points of damage. Nice. As it catches the wolf that had gone for its chest area trying to reach the throat it gets those antlers up under the wolf's body and with a heave of its head its nostrils snorting its eyes wild with fury essentially yeets this wolf past a dreamer yelping to crash down in the snow skidding to a stop unmoving you're gosh dang right rian's turn Yup. Okay, so we can hear this, though, right? Like we can. Oh, absolutely. There, there is now in the dark ahead of you, just this outburst of snarls and the lowing of, you know, whatever dreamer had been interacting with. And what's this like? This here is this just like uh, like a little it's bush. stone? St- it's just a bush. Okay. It's bush. It's, it's a snow-covered bush. Okay. It is. Um. I don't suppose I can. Can I? get in it like is it considered like uh i would regard it difficult terrain shit okay however if you are uh able to reach let's see here on the moose's flank you would be at just enough to be able to hit one of the wolves just out of range so but you'd be able to hit one if you moved there i can't move there like i he'd have to dash oh okay yeah I'd have to dash, or I can cast Expeditious Retreat, but it puts me like... Oh, that is 60 feet right there. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So, as a bonus action, that lightning surges through him as he hears all this commotion going on and no dreamers out there by himself. And just his legs become energized and he just friggin' flies at full sprint. And goes all the way over there. And as he's going, he pulls both his swords. And... Is going to try to mess this wolf up in the back there. Yep. So. Now you only have your action attack against it because you used bonus action for expeditious retreat, but. That is true. Yep. So I got both my swords out, but yeah, I'm just going to hit with the dragon long sword then, or dragon slayer short sword. Yep. Bloop. 15, 15 connects. Nice. Okay, and let's see what we get. Oof, min damage. Ah, natty one. Three, three damage to it. He's like, wolves! He just screams out as he gets there. Alrighty. That is Miri. What is she doing? Um, Now, Miri, on the other hand, is going to fly over here, because she now has 45 feet of movement with flight. That's weird. My map got all jacked up, so let me... And since she doesn't have to land anymore... She can hover right above that bush and give this some bitch a bite. So yeah, she's gonna go with her uh, electric bite and attack. See what she gets. Seventeen hits. Yep. Nice. And then she's going to do. Oof, man, that is not great. Okay, yep. Two d four plus one d eight, and I got a six. So yeah, so she uh, she gives him a bite with her little electric teeth. Does she go anywhere after that? That is the max of her movement. She That's her 45 feet of movement. So gotcha. She's, she's, me and her are stuck right there. Going toe-to-toe with this, this these wolves. Hoping to protect this goddamn moose. All right. Krellick. Um, he can get 
You can pass under this tree. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if he sprints, he can make it right there. Yep. So I guess that's really all he can do. Just to get in the fight. Sprint all the way up there. No, that's good. All right. Dreamer, it is your turn. What are you doing? I'll say to the moose, these are my friends. They're not going to hurt you. <laughs> Please help! I'm going to uh, use my bonus action to use Bomb of the Summer Court. Attaboy. I'm going to use two dice on the moose. Cool. Attaboy. Save dot moose moose walla walla. Oh, uh, so, sorry. Five HP back and two temp HP. Gotcha, gotcha. He still ain't doing great. Oh, that's okay. Eat something else today. <laughs> Are you moving there? I run past this wolf. It is going to try and snap at you. It is this very, like, much older looking animal, almost sickly. Uh, you can actually see its ribs poking out under its fur. It looks to be in, in pretty bad shape. Now, it does not have an ally within five feet of you, so it's only going to do a regular bite on you. Ow! <laughs> Ooh, but I gotcha. Ooh, 21 to hit. Got him. For six well, points of piercing damage, and I am going to need an athletics check. Yeah, you might not have made that far, bud. Yep. <laughs> I gotcha. I believe in you. 100%. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope, just yeah. shy. 10 as this, 11. As this old animal with patches of fur having been almost pulled you can almost see it's been pulled out it's got something ill with it but it's still able to bring you down and pull you into the snow and you land face first into it and all you see is white for a bit and then you lift your head and there's just this wolf with its legs fixed into the wood of your leg you know scraping the metal in the wood would it be would it get me when i'm here because that's when I leave its range? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that means I don't have enough movement to stand up. So I'm just going to thorn whip at disadvantage. Okay. The one that's attacking you? Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> just going to try to whip it over me. Whip it good. Good luck, bro. Nope. Mm, nope. Mm. Not Nine? Good yeah, there. unfortunately. I mean, yeah, it sucks. Yep. All right. As you lift your head and lash out your hand, you know, that thorn whip comes racing out of your, uh, out of your, it was the wrist, right? Yep. And cracks ineffectually in the air over the wolf pack's head. That is now Tavini's turn. Tavini's going to make sure that her lantern's out so she can actually see where she's running. Is that a bonus action? To... to light a lantern? I want to say it's normally an action. Okay. But yeah. no, doesn't Tavini have dark vision now? Yeah, she with has that the helmet. helmet. Yeah, with the helmet you do have dark vision. <gasps> oh. oh yeah, so you don't even need to pull out the... Uh... That'll save my action. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I'll allow you to roll it back. Thank you. So with 60 feet of movement, you'd be able to get there? I've only got 25. Although, if you're looking to use a ranged attack, you don't have to be nearly that close. Mm -hmm. True that. Yeah, I almost did that too. I was like, maybe I'll just fire my bow. But I was like, ah, I want to try to at least absorb one of these hits. Or a hizil. You know. True. Whichever you, whatever you got, I'm sure you can do. Unless it's touch, I guess. She just needs to get within like 30 feet of okay. at least Krellic and Rian. Uh, she would be able to be within 30 feet of Krellic. Rian would be just outside of her range. And there's this uh, cliff wall going down, yes? Yes. 20 feet, yes. Yeah, it would be 2d6 of fall damage if you go that route, but you can if you want. I mean, technically that would put Krellic, Rian, and Miri within 30 feet if you did that, but uh... don't take the damage if you don't have to. I mean... Yet she doesn't like her friends being uh, facing off against so many wolves so she's going to she's gonna jump down the cliff okay this tiny two foot tall halfling just 
Oh, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she jumps. Okay. So six huh? points of damage, and as you hit the bottom, roll me an ac- acrobatics check really quick. <laughs> She's gonna nail it. Uh, yep, no, watch she's that. It's not. gonna be badass. You got it. You got it. It's gonna be a crit. Oh, <laughs> not a crit by any means. Four. Nope. As you as four. you hit the bottom, your boots hit a patch of ice, and you you slip a little and fall onto your back, so you are knocked prone. If you stand up, you would have a remaining uh, ten feet of movement for having hopped down. Oh, thank goodness. You're still within range. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no, she doesn't have enough to get up anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, she will She will scoot forward the remaining ten feet like ow, 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 ow. and then she will touch her holy symbol, lift it up into the air and say um, a prayer of blessing upon her, her friends that are forward. Alright, and what does that do? Oh, Oh, there we go. Bless. Krellick, Rand, dope, and dope, dope. Oh, sweet. Okay. Let's see if I can do something with that. Alrighty. That now brings us to Felgrin. If you're doing ranged attacks, you do have the moose almost uh, providing just a little bit of cover to the wolves. It is tall enough that you can see them through its legs. So they would have a plus two to their AC when firing through the space of the moose. Uh, what I have planned, it just requires me to see them. Nice. Cool, cool. Um, so I'm going to target these two. He's going to twin levitate. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right. Um, what do they need? They need constitution saving throws. All right. Nice. An uh, eight and a five. So that's both, fucking awesome. So both of them float 20 feet directly in the air. That is so good. That is so good, dude. That is awesome. All right. Yeah, so... I think he just kind of snaps both of his fingers and they start floating. That yeah. is so good. <laughs> Peering at the wolves behind this very badly wounded moose's legs, you concentrate on them and with a snap, both of them are hauled, yelping as if by their tails into the air. <laughs> where they hang dangling, scrabbling towards the ground with their paws, obviously confused. They just give uh, a smug smile. Dreamer, because you can understand them <laughs> with that, that spell on yourself, you hear from one of them, uh, almost a, a feminine voice, Oh my god, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> and from the other, I don't know what's happening, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> they became the fucking hyenas from Lion King. <laughs> so, so yeah, with with nothing at least perceivably to be able to pull themselves down, they're just up there for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, uh, but he can move them, um, if if, <laughs> yeah. if need be. Send them to space. But for now, it's just twenty feet. I mean, we that may have just saved this thing, like because we that got one tied up, one's got Dreamer, and you got the other two out. The other <laughs> one's dead. So. Yeah. The uh, the one. That uh, has your leg clenched in its teeth, Dreamer, growls through a mouthful of your leg. And it has this very deep voice, this elderly man's voice, almost like a war veteran. Best to lay off, kid. This is our hunt. What do you say? Go hunt something else, you idiot. Nice. (laughs) Nice. It's a new side of Dreamer. I like it. It is going to bite down in the same place where it is currently, like, holding your leg. Rolls a one. (laughs) I am prone. Yes. I am prone. Oh, Oh, yeah, you are prone. Advantage, damn it. It's another natty one. Yeah, for sure. Damn it. Oh, Oh, it's... Oh, rolls a 19. It rolled on that one for a second for me. (laughs) Oh, yay. Hey. All right. Double ones for... With your chassis being wood and metal... Those teeth, this elderly animal with its ribs poking out and bits of fur missing, but with the grizzled voice of a warrior, goes to bite and you hear some of its teeth crack. Oof. And it lets go of your leg yelping and starts pawing at its muzzle. Let's see. One of the wolves has recently been attacked by both Miri and Rian, 
And seeing the other two hauled into the air is going to disengage and go racing back up the slope away from this wolf or this uh, moose Smart. and the party. Tail between his legs, just yelping the entire time, leaving a trail of blood from the bites and the sword wound in the snow. The Yay. huge one that has been hauled into the air by the spell continues to almost like turn in the air a little <laughs> as if being uh, twisted about by the breeze. Has nothing upon which it can gain purchase except the other wolf, the one with the feminine voice. To your, in your mind, dreamer, because the others can only hear snarling. And he does briefly push off of her with his forepaws and sends the pair of them sort of away from each other. It's a perfect gift. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Little dog in the And uh, that is about as much as he can manage. And uh, same thing for her. They're just pushing off one another. The moose, eyes rolling in its head, obviously in pain, but obviously infuriated, sweeps the that rack of anters low under the elderly wolf. Nice. <laughs> that's floating? No, I no the, the, one, uh, that's the got, one that's on oh, the ground okay, attacking Dreamer. Dreamer. Okay, okay. Oh, rolls a 15 to hit. Nice. For 8 and 5, for 18 points of piercing Ooh. damage, which kills this wolf outright as he again just sweeps this thing up into the air where it crashes down about 10 feet away and then turns its attention to the two in the air, but all it has is its stomp attack left and it can't quite reach them. And it is just huffing these great snorting gouts of steam. Head low, legs trembling, as the adrenaline is still in it. But, uh, unless you're gonna do anything with them, Felgren, the immediate initiative is, uh... Oh no, we still have that fleeing wolf. Yeah, we're gonna take it to Rian. What are you doing, Rian? Um, seems like the fight's kinda over. And he's more worried about the moose. The last, you know, combatant is fleeing. So, I think he would sheathe his swords and uh or not sheathe the swords he'd probably keep his swords out but he'd check on the moose make sure the moose is okay be like oh easy there fella easy there you got a you got a big bite there all right and what's miri doing because she can fly i was gonna say I, these. I was gonna say i don't think miri would like if rian didn't tell her to stop i think miri's probably gonna fly up and take a bite at this one or take a, a scratch at it all righty let's see 14 14 connects Nice. And this is just a normal scratch. Nice. Yeah. Nine damage. So, Miri flapping her way up to the uh, the smaller of the two wolves remaining, lashes out with those hind claws, and one of them catches this wolf in the belly and just rips it open, and there's a splash of blood across the snow. Oh, gross. Uh, <laughs> as it is whimpering now. Trying to snap at her, twisting in the air. Krellick, what are you doing? Uh, Krellick's gonna move himself right here, and... They are 20 feet up. Ready his hammer in case this one drops. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a floater yep. pitch. Like oh my god, like it's... it's... <laughs> no, because you know what comes to mind? Uh, Midsommar. Yep. <laughs> like either way, it's gonna die. It's just whether it dies on the on the landing or whether it gets Gallaghered. Yes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So, Dreamer, you have enough movement speed to pick yourself up from the snow, and as you do, going through your mind is what you know of these two animal varieties of animal: moose, big, typically aggressive. Though you have spoken to this one, and he seems. Oafish, wolves, intelligent, often track their prey for miles. And I will ask what you're doing in this moment as you pick yourself up to your feet. What are you doing hunting a moose? You're asking the ones, the one nearest to you? Yeah. Oh, it was distracted and it was hungry and we are hungry. He's kind of like, he's the beefy boy of the wolf pack. You can see the muscle rippling under the fur. If they're eating, he is certainly eating well, comparatively. And what about you to the other one? Uh, I take it 
going around the table? Are we uh, out of combat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, we can take us okay. out of. Uh, In that initiative. case, Phil, gonna move like right there. <laughs> so the the scarred one, which had fled with its tail between its legs, disappears into the woods, and the two that are remaining, one of them. Miri is sort of flapping under it, and she's just out of range for a bite. Dreamer, you can hear just a string of colorful insults from this wolf towards Miri uh, in the vein of, I'm gonna eat your pups! I'm gonna drag you into the river and drown you! <laughs> wow, she's mad. I'm gonna say... bury you under a tree and forget where I buried you! <laughs> Easy, easy, girl, easy. <laughs> Does Dreamer translate? <laughs> Are you translating? Uh, um, yeah, that's that's the wolf talking, not Miri. Oh, the that's way. the wolf. I thought that was that's Miri. The, talking. That's or, the wolf or, talking. My bad. I yeah. misunderstood that. I thought it was Miri talking to the wolf. I was like, <laughs> "Jeez, Miri." <laughs> Dreamer might say that is a very angry wolf. Mm, yes, I would imagine. He's just kind of twirling his fingers <laughs> like in a circle and spinning them around. They're spinning like rotisserie chickens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dropping it just kind of close enough to Miri and then lifting it back up. Like, oh, nope. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> almost had her that time. Yeah. You well, gotta be quicker. Anyway, and a few more minutes of this, and it's probably cruel. What's the verdict? Just letting them go, or what? There's. Obviously, plenty more that you've eaten. You look very healthy. Why hunt the moose? Game is 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 scarce. Not always. Hares do. Occasional fox. I'm a better digger than the others. Oh, don't translate that. Better fucking... not. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> fucking drop them hard. Did did you hunt this one specifically? We hunted a moose. It's nothing personal. <laughs> How far have you come? Miles. Uh, I'm at a loss. I think uh, Rian would be like, a Dreamer, you, you're talking to those animals, right? Yes. You can speak to them. Right now. What if, uh, what if we make a deal with them? I don't think that'll work. Why not? That one's very angry. Well, I mean, they don't really have much choice. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like... We can leave him up there, or Grin can take him higher and drop him. I can have Miri eat him. Or, maybe they can help us track this, uh, this moose. We don't need to. We don't need to? Nope. You know where the moose is. This one told me. How are you feeling, by the way? Yeah, the injured moose has sort of tucked his long legs under him to lay in the snow with a woomph. And is resting his head on the ground. And as you ask, one of those big eyes comes open and rolls your direction. I'm a... Ow! I've got something for that. One moment. Thank you. Now, when you come down, you're going to go hunt elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and the, the female is still uh, snarling at Miri. Can I cast Produce Flame and just sort of like chuck it near the other wolf? Like, yeah, as you... Listen to me. <laughs> roll me a, uh, an intimidation check with advantage. Twelve. Yikes. I mean, she is just a wolf. True. Yeah. So uh, as she's twisting in the air like a rotisserie chicken, the bit of flame that you produce and hurl her direction singes the end of her nose and she yelps. Ears laid back, tail curling between her legs, holds her legs close to her body and just kind of stares at you as she continues to turn, head turning with her to make sure that she's always looking at you. Sorry, that was much closer than I wanted. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you're done hunting in these woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell your friend who ran away. Yeah, this is our territory now. My arms are getting tired. He's just kind of holding them up. Tavini, um, Tavini kind of reaches up and tugs on Rian's sleeve. Hmm. Oh, what? What's going on? Didn't we uh need 
uh, s- s- sled dogs. Huh. We That's could, a bad idea. Uh, feed, feed them and protect them. Um, I mean, I've, I, we've, we've entertained way worse suggestions. Um, <laughs> dream, remember the dreamer. last wild animal that we tried to make our sled? See, that, that was an accident. True. Mistakes were made. And these are wild wolves. These are wolves. I... We can just buy sled dogs. I don't... I... Why is this let, a thing? Let... Well, but we can talk to these ones. We couldn't talk to the last ones. He can talk to them for now. Not permanently. That's uh, so we can make a... They, these things know if they flip out. We... we. I mean, if you guys are 100% against it, that's I am, fine. I, I, well, I am not on board. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. Unfo- I, Tavini, I thought it was a fun idea. The, the amount of time and effort it would take to train them alone is worth the cost of just buying them. I don't know. We could, you know, is, if we could just talk to them, is that training? We'd be like, hey, sit in here, do this, we'll take care of you. You don't ever have to worry about food again. Hey, we could have pets. I'm going to say no. Okay. Hey, I, I completely understand. I figure this is a... I don't think... I, if you're, you're uncomfortable with it, I completely understand. Then it is a... We can just let these ones go and get some sled dogs later. It's just but, not uh, in their nature. Dreamer, as the others are having this conversation, the smaller brown wolf, the female, is continuing to stare at you, giving her giving you her full attention as demanded. The bigger, beefier boy is watching the others, completely unable to understand what they're saying. Uh, but then he looks to you. What are... Uh, what are they saying? <laughs> Nothing important. <laughs> ah! Are you gonna eat us? No, probably not. Felgren, could we let them down gently? Gently? You gonna eat him? And he's looking at the uh, the dead wolf and licking his lips. Are we gonna eat him? <laughs> no. Okay. What's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> probably no. not. So you let him down? Yes, wanted to drop him. Krellic, do you uh, do you do anything when <laughs> the bigger one touches down in front of you? That's our dominance. Yeah, I think it just <laughs> starts deep. Te- te- hoses over the wolf. Dreamer's like, can you put them down gently? <laughs> and yeah, then what? Sure. Smash! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just gonna watch the wolf close, and if he comes for the comes for anyone, he's he's getting them. He's toast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah with, with with Krellick, they, he is toast. Like, <laughs> Krellick hits harder than that fucking moose, and that moose put two of them down. <laughs> Miri? Back? Back up? Hi. Hi. Miri, Miri come on D- down. Down. Come to handle this. She, don't worry. So she, I think she'll come down, fly over here, and same thing as Krellick. Like, kind of got ready to ready to strike if uh, if it gets a little... A little handsy. Wolf versus dragon. See how this goes. As they touch down, the pair of them, tails between their legs, heads low, obvious signs of submission, skirt around the party to the far side of the elderly wolf which had fallen. And between the two of them, start dragging it backwards up the slope very laboriously. Want that one too? Hey, don't forget the other one. <laughs> I'm sure they'll come back for it. Hey, hey, that's a good call. They reach the top of the slope where, out of the brush, the one which had run away slinks forward, and the trio set into eating their fallen companion. And you can see that though the bigger one, the beefy boy, you know, his fur is sleek, he's obviously healthy. The other two, similar to the older one, you could see their ribs poking out under their fur. It just kind of hangs loose on them, as if they'd mm. lost a great deal of weight. Oh, puppy. Animal Kingdom style. The the big ones eat first. Gotta keep the... So they're the ones getting all the food for everybody. Now remember, not in these woods. They don't pay you any mind. Okay, I think they got the message. <laughs> not in my woods. Well. Hey, that was fun. Once that's over, I will come over to the moose and 
If you'll let me, I will apply some of that ointment that I just made. Ooh, the one point per minute for an hour? Mm-hmm. Nice. It's a little overkill, yeah. but... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it's it's fun. He see, you seem to have gained his trust by saving his life, and though he's eyeballing the rest of the party, because, you know, he obviously can't understand them at all, he does allow you to start applying ointment. Guys, forget sled dogs. We can get a sled moose. <laughs> Those things will power through snow. I was going to say, now that's a fun idea. Still a terrible yeah, idea. Get, oh, yeah. You know, we absolutely. Could get, like, the, we could make a, a big-ass cart like the one that the goblins had. Get a couple mooses. Maybe I actually a had a gift moose? saved for this for the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It just goes through the fucking snow like it ain't nothing. And as big as that thing is, you know that snow is probably at least three to four feet high. That is not, like, just a couple feet, because mooses sit, like, ridiculous. They're taller than cars. So yeah. that means that shit's probably, like, four feet deep of snow, and he's just running through it like nothing there. Like me running into the friggin' beach or some shit like that. So, Dreamer, as you are applying this ointment, though the attack had been brief, it had also been incredibly vicious. And in its thick fur, its hide, you're finding places where the wolves had bitten and then sort of, like, turned their heads aside to tear open as much as they could. It takes a bit of work, especially around the throat area, where the pack leader had gripped and had used his full weight to just kind of pull down his teeth, leaving raking marks there. But uh, you're able, able to apply the ointment. The moose still stands there quiver quivering, uh, as if, you know, now that he's back on his feet, he might lose his feet again. Oh, thank, thank you. You're welcome. You'll feel better in about an hour. That's, uh, that's some in- that's magic, yeah? No, that's just good medicine. Oh. And he, he nods, which, Felgrin, Rian, and Krellick, you kind of- you have to take a leap back- as he does, because those that rack of antlers almost catches you on the upswing. Oh my god, Mary attack! Mary attack! <laughs> on it! He's turning on us! Oh. He's bloodthirsty! <laughs> He's got a taste of blood! And you said your friend was over that direction. Well, we're uh, not exactly friends, but that's yeah where he likes to, to linger. There's a dead place there. A dead place. Yeah, they, uh, I've stayed on occasion. It's not really for me, though. I don't like being, uh, you know, cooped up in a cave. Not a man-made cave. That is very good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he's got some little buddies with him in there, too. Little buddies? What do they look like? Well, your typical foxes and hares, and he's got a few owls that stay with him. You know, I, I can't really take care of stuff like that, but he makes them safe, I think. God, out of character, that sounds very familiar. Well, thank you for your help. I'm sorry I distracted you and got you attacked. Oh, it's the, uh, you know... I could have fought him off. And he paws at the dirt and tosses those antlers again. <laughs> could you, though? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. Just be careful in the future. Be good. I will. I'm gonna get out of here in case they get hungry. Like, well. And he looks over. And up the slope, you hear the sharp crack of bone as one of the wolves, you know, gnaws into one of the uh, the leg bones up there. That's a good plan. Okay. See you another time, little buddy. <laughs> and he starts trotting uh, nonchalantly through Felgrin, through Krellick, through Miri. Oh. That big body, like, God. you know, make room or get run over, essentially. Get wrecked. Noob. He'll duck under the, the rack. Yeah. 
Well, done our good deed for the day. Right. Dreamer, you said that uh, you talked to it, and it, 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 I mean, obviously you talked to it, but that it, it gave you directions to the, to the Great White Moose? Yes. It sounds like there are some ruins to the northwest that it, it oh. is staying in. It has a little sanctuary of other creatures. A sanctuary of other creatures? It keeps other creatures with it. No, I, I get it, but it just... That doesn't sound like Norman Moose behavior, which just reinforces this whole... Something more more special to this creature. But, but I guess, again, it's all conjecture till we find it. And I'll so. start going northwest. I, I lead the way, my friend. Oh, hello there. Felgren here, sorcerer extraordinaire. If you're like me, you're a fan of the simple beauty of the gold piece. And I've got a way for you to save someone some high-quality merchandise from RatTrapGames.com. Low-cost scenics that are a breeze to assemble. Mats that make any GM's life easier, books, dice, and more to help you build the perfect world. Use code SQLR21 for 10% off at RatTrapGames.com to make your tabletop epic. Alright. Roll me another survival check. This time with advantage, because you have had at least a general direction provided. Another 22. Nice. Ooh. 22. All right. Well, after a, a few more hours travel, about two, a dreamer, you pick up a set of tracks in the snow. Familiar, because you have only just recently finished tracking sets like these. However, these are much larger, easily twice as large as the tracks of the moose you had previously followed. And as you wind your way further north and northwest and follow its trail, you're getting the sense that if you were to head back the opposite direction along these tracks, away from them instead of toward, that you would likely find the town of Lonelywood. Another hour's worth of tracking, and ahead of you in the darkness at the edges of Tavini's lantern light, you see a tall, slender marble statue, its surface completely smooth, standing in front of you. You could see additional statues to the left and to the right, all of them oriented north. Seen from behind, from your position, seemingly robed. Okay. What are you doing? Mildly creepy. Tavini's stepping f toward the statue to get a good look and draw it into her book later. Careful. I think I'll go with her. As you approach, you find that you are standing in front of and all of these statues are facing northward. That although from behind they seem featureless, when you get in front of them you see this is not the case. They are instead very clearly humanoids with their hoods up all facing north. The wind has worn down their features, but enough remains that you can determine that these are elves of some kind. Each of these cylindrical bases of worn granite are about seven feet high. So these statues are pretty high above you. Wow. Interesting. Barry, fly up there. See what those look like. <laughs> On it. Uh, as she does, and you sort of turn northward and get a better look at what's going on, you see that there's a snowy hillside to your west that just kind of rises up into the darkness. There is a 10 foot high berm in front of you that is obscuring your vision of whatever lies beyond it. You could see some evergreens clustered around the top of it and what appears to be the tops of some pillars 
to your north atop this uh, structure, this natural structure in front of you. When Miri gets to the top, she sees exactly as I had described, a, uh, a wind-worn elven face, hooded, difficult to tell whether male or female, but with the ears giving it away. Which is some type of elven sighter. Or, uh, mm. the, how tall is the burn? You said it was 10 feet? Yep, this berm is 10 feet tall. So they're, the elves standing up on top of these seven foot high plinths, mm-hmm. their heads just clear the berm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, they're like, I can't see up there, but I wonder maybe if there's like a, a temple or a city. Miri up there, it's like, there's a big stone box up here and another statue. It sounds like a temple. Hmm. Or a sarcophagus? I don't know. How big is the box? uh, Big enough to fit you. Okay, well, that sounds like a sarcophagus. (laughs) There's something glass over there. She seems to be peering to the northwest. Okay, well, there's nothing down here, so... No, let's push on. See if we can't uh, see what the hell this place is. All right. As you head further westward, Rian, you see a large door and i should note that in this space every square is 10 feet oh this is big you are staring at a 10 foot wide 15 foot high door in sort of a circular indentation it has this oval shape to it is embedded in the hillside with no visible handles or hinges Mm. and all of these figures seem to be 10 feet apart all facing towards this central area? They're all about 20 feet apart and they all face roughly northward that same area. Can Tavini she's smarter than me can she figure out how if if this is perhaps a circle how far across it might be? Just to get a rough estimate of how big she thinks this temple is? In case the the statues all make a circle? Yeah, if the statues all made a circle, how big would she think the temple is? Uh, I, I am neither. I am also not that smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big. A hundred, a few hundred yeah. feet across. It's very, yeah. very, very big. Big bada boom. Big big circle. Bada boom. Oh, uh, oh, easily, good. easily, easily 300 feet apart. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, that is big. It's a big area. Yeah. Uh, however. Huge. Mm-hmm. Rian, as you approach that door, there's a gap in the base of the hillside and the berm to your right that is still in open air. This is not indoors that you're looking into. Snow continues to fall. But as it lands in the sort of center courtyard that you see in front of you, you could see that it melts. The ground is damp, leaving several depictions of half-full circles around a central glass shape. Huh. Like, look. I think Vat would catch his, like, he's interested in the door, but I think the... All of that to the north catches his eyes immediately, and he just kind of starts wandering north. What is this? And he'll uh, step into this area. Be like, All look right. at this. This is crazy. Ooh, Tavini hurries to catch up. <laughs> Krellick's standing by Tavini. He doesn't trust any of this. <laughs> yes, that's understandable. Bring the light. All right. Like, look at this. There's some type of mural or something. Are these. He's almost looking like. Uh, Moons, maybe? I don't know. Tavini, mm-hmm. as you lay eyes on this shape and it starts to uh, clarify in the light of your lantern, you have to step closer to get the entirety of it in your lantern light. And the light from your lantern that filters through it sends a reflection through the opposite side and you can see a sort of triangular shape across the circle from you. A shadow pointed towards a round circle in the northwest. And you, being as intelligent as you are, recognize this sort of device. 
This is a gnomon. It is a device typically found in the middle of a sundial. It is thick near the base and narrows to a sharp point at the top. For some reason, none of the snow that lands on the ground here remains. It all melts. And you're able to see several carved depictions of the moon around this circle. Taken together, you, Tavini, would make out that this is not a sundial. This is a moon dial. Oh, I love it. Uh, Tavini will just start like writing this down and, and sketching into her book, trying to get what she sees onto her book. Like this is this is like so fascinating to her. She's like a kid in a candy store, just like going around, going, mm-hmm. hoo, hoo, and just like sketching things out and going. Hoo. Well, lay it out for the dimmer people here. Uh, uh, oh, uh, it is a, uh, it is like a, a, a sundial, but for the moon. Those exist. Yeah. I- yes. Interesting. And she's looking at each of the the circles and trying to figure out. Like, instead of telling time, she's wondering if perhaps it's telling phases. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) The the response. I'm assuming they're laughing at the response. The yup from From fucking unseen hair. (laughs) (laughs) Just a random rabbit off in the distance. (laughs) Yeah, you can. (laughs) <laughs> for those that couldn't see it because I just wanted to explain it because it was too funny yeah. uh, Lando posted in the chat not to interrupt anybody saying do we have time for Dreamer to cast speak with Animal as Tavini explains the moon dial which Josie then replied back apparently highlighting <laughs> an animal or something that just says from a hair yup <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you can>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally bro no problem <laughs> We hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Hold on. Walked across the room for that joke. <laughs> we, and, so, and we thank you for your uh, service. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rian. Yeah. You don't speak Elvish, do you? I don't. That's a funny thing. I, I, I specifically took it because he didn't grow up around elves. Let's say he... Uh, he grew up around dwarves and he grew up around gnomes and like and people in like in just lower lower class city folk is who he grew up around, so. Alright. Dreamer, you are the only person who can translate some symbols around the nearest moon shape to you, Rian Miri. Miri has seen them and is kinda like nose inches from them trying to decipher them. Mm-hmm. But the swirling script seems to elude her. You, however, read, Unlock the Tombs of the Half Moon, in a sort of arching script around that half moon there. Unlock the Tomb of the Half Moon. Tavini, as you're scripting, you can see that there is yet more language written around this moon here on the ground to the north. Uh, she will head over there and have a look and call out. Uh, there is more. What language is that that I just read? Elvish. And as you approach where Tavini is and she draws your attention to it, there's another moon symbol here with Elvish written around it. Gaze upon your own face. And have seven questions answered. But the real question is, is Dreamer relaying this information? He's, he's reading it out loud. Okay. Just because he doesn't know how he knows. Oh, Elvish? He's just reading this out loud. Gotcha. And what was the first one? Unlock the tombs of the half moon. Acrylic. You can see at the very edges of the grayscale of your dark vision that the western portion of this circle that you find yourself in, this open-aired courtyard, has 
crumbled in on itself. There is a great deal of debris lying on the floor there. And there is a gaping chasm into darkness beyond that threshold. Uh, I think I'm going to go take a look over there. And I think he's going to go over and take a look. Be careful. So as you stand outside the circle, you're surprised by the warmth that you feel flooding from this place. You could see another elven statue there. You could see a passage leading deeper within, past this large chamber that you're in. And you could see a trio of hares cuddled up asleep on the wall opposite you, seemingly nuzzled into one another. And as you look in, you hear this great gushing gout of breath. A familiar sound. A much deeper sound than you had heard previously hours before. And you hear the clack of hooves over stone approaching. I think Krolik's gonna start waving his hands back behind him, see if he can get someone's attention. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to imagine Rian was keeping an eye on Krolik, especially if he was wandering off by himself. Yeah, and as you approach the hole from the south... Oh, oh that's a big token. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I can't see it, but I imagine it's big. Oh. Remember, oh. each of these tiles is ten feet. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, these tiles are ten feet? Yeah, these are ten foot <laughs> tiles. Everything that we've been walking around is ten feet apiece. Oh. Krellick, as a large white shape comes drifting into view from the southern half of the chamber... It's fur stained with red in places. You could see gore dangling from its antlers. Jesus. As it steps into sight, freezes in place, and turns that massive head towards you in a very obvious posture of aggression. Oh, oh shite. Dear. Choose your next move very carefully. Uh... Dreamer, talk to it. Hurry. Yeah. Don't yell in front of it. What are you? I don't. Please don't it's attack. Much, it's big. Just step away. Ah, uh, take a step back. Dreamer, what language are you shouting? Oh yeah, never mind. You, you're you're spellbound. As you shout, please don't attack. The moose, which has started to advance towards the hole, pauses a moment. And it sways uncertainly on those long legs. Easy, everyone. Easy. Felger's got his hands in the air like... <laughs> like he's surrendering. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want any trouble. From the beast, amidst this deep rumbling sound in its chest, is this warning sort of exhalation. And then a ponderous voice. We do not entertain intruders. Mm. Dreamer, you understand this perfectly. The others, these are not animal sounds coming from this creature. There is a language being spoken here that you do not understand. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, thank the moose you. continues to advance, stiff-legged. Starts to squeeze its way out of the hole. Krellick, do you make room for it? <laughs> or do you hold your ground? <laughs> He's already moving. <laughs> <laughs> well, Felgren knows Infernal, and let me just say, thank God it's not speaking that. Yeah, no shit. So. Oh shit, this is all dream work. Oh god. <laughs> it's all yeah, on you, buddy. Not, Don't... not the most persuasive of the group. He's still got good charisma. Save me, dreamer. And you could see its muscles twitching, those eyes rolling back in its head, exposing the whites, oh, the nostrils flared with contained fury. Oh, God. It is momentarily surprised enough by you speaking to it in a language it can understand that it is holding its ground. 
but it is not going to last forever, Dreamer. We are not like the loggers and hunters who have attacked you and you have attacked in the past. I know you don't entertain intruders, but we seek to understand why. Men do not belong in the wood. Men will be banished from the wood. All you, chief. <laughs> I know. I, I gotta think. Panicking. <laughs> <laughs> the moose is in your cart, buddy. There's... <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the moose is in your court. There's a way you can live in peace. Man. No peace!